Well, hello again, folks. Welcome to Backwoods Logic number five. This is the second part of a short series I'm doing on alternative lighting. Now I feel it's pretty safe to say that the majority of our population is entirely dependent on the grid, but yet a very small percentage of the population make any preparations whatsoever for when the grid goes down. In a lot of ways that surprises me, but yet in other ways it doesn't surprise me at all, because our society nowadays uh, has grown accustomed to taking things for granted with the assumption that the electric power will always be there. Now what my intentions are for this series is to show numerous types of alternative lighting that I have used over the years. I don't have time to get in depth with every individual item, but I just want to show the methods of operation, touch base on the safety precautions that need to be taken, and then discuss the pros and cons from my experiences with them. I am speaking from my experiences only, nothing more, nothing less. So let's get the lanterns back out and get started. Okay, I'm going to start out discussing the permanent type gas lights that you put in a cabin or camper or that kind of thing. I can't say enough good stuff about these. They've been a big part of my life. I've been using them my entire life. So I'm going to take it out of the box and show you what's involved with these here. So inside the box, you have the instruction manual. The unit itself, which mounts to a wall, the globe, the hardware to hook it up with, a preformed mantle, similar to what is used with the Aladdins. This is the little ceramic coupling that goes on here that the mantle slips onto. And then they give you some extra mantles as well. But nothing works as good as the preformed mantles. I would suggest if you have these kind of lights to get the best results is to have this type of mantle. So we'll take a closer look at this light here and I'll talk about the pros and cons from my experiences with them. I can't say enough good things about these lights. Now the lights I used to buy were the Humphrey lights, but you can't find them anymore. This is the same item, so I'm thinking that this Mr. Heater company here must have bought out the Humphrey Light Company because uh, you can't find the Humphreys anymore, but this is the exact same thing. So they must have bought out the company. Now they also have these kits that are optional where you can hook three lights to have like as an overhead chandelier. And that would throw a lot of light, I want to tell you. Now for this video, I can only give you just a brief overview of how they operate. I can't show you how to install them but I will be installing some in the New Hampshire cabin and I will do an in-depth tutorial on the process at that time. I was intending on putting some here in the homestead, but since I'm probably going to be selling this place off, I'm not going to bother. Um, so let's uh, get started with this and then I'll walk you through the pros and cons and then we'll move on to the portable gas lights. Now this style of light is intended to be mounted to a wall in a permanent position and you have your copper gas line come up and feed it from the bottom. Once it's installed, you simply just turn the lever up, put a lit match under the globe, the mantle ignites, and you're on. When you want to shut it off, just shut it off. It's as simple as that. They're plenty bright enough to achieve task. Like I said, they throw about as much light as a 70 watt bulb. Very, very handy item to have. Now, on the lantern itself, this back plate comes off with these two screws. You mount the back plate to the wall. You connect the gas line right there with the connections that are provided. Then you put the mounting plate back on. You install this preformed mantle. As you can see, it has little tabs right there that fit with a quarter turn and lock into these little notches. You install your globe. Turn on the gas and light it. This little ceramic coupling here is made to accommodate the tie-on mantles, which they also include. 
Now the instruction manual that they provide is very easy to follow, very descriptive and to the point. There's not a bunch of mumbo jumbo in here. Um, very easy to follow. It's well done. Now like everything else in life, there's pros and cons. Pros and cons to everything. And all of these lights and lanterns have their advantages and disadvantages. So let's talk about the advantages first. As I already mentioned, these are very, very easy to operate. They're very safe and very dependable. Uh, when I was a little boy, my father taught me how to light these lights and operate them safely. I'm still using the same exact lights that he taught me on. And that was a long time ago. If you have them in a strategic location, they'll throw all the light that you need to achieve your task. So let's talk about the disadvantages. I would say the biggest disadvantage is the uh, installation process. It requires a bit of expertise, um, can be a little bit intimidating, and like any propane burning device, it needs to have a good solid connection that does not leak. If you find it too intimidating, I highly suggest that you hire a professional to do your installation. Um, because it's a permanent fixture, every single light requires a copper gas line to feed it. Um, so this requires a bit more thought and planning. Uh, the copper gas line isn't flexible like a copper wire. When you're running electricity, you can bend that wire all over the place, snake it through a hole, hide it in a wall. You don't have that luxury with the copper tubing. Some people might feel that the copper tubing feeding the light is an eyesore. I don't feel that way as long as it's done in a nice straight line and not all cobbed up somewhere. Uh, again, because it requires a copper tube um, to feed it, that finding a spot near your work surface to hang a light, if the light is being put in as an afterthought, sometimes it's difficult to find a good convenient way to run the gas line to it. Um, if you hung it on the side of a cabinet, you might need to run that copper with some elbows and up over the cabinet or something like that. But again, it just takes a little bit of thought and planning. So that should pretty much cover the advantages and disadvantages to these lights here. But for a really reliable backup lighting source or for an off-grid cabin, I highly recommend this style of light. Coleman Lantons. These have been around a long time and certainly need no introduction, that's for sure. There is a few small tidbits of information that you might find beneficial though, especially if you're using them for emergency lighting and you're relying on the one pound cylinders to power them. During a major outage, the small cylinders might be awful hard to find because everybody else is shopping for them as well. Now one thing that I highly suggest is picking up a hose that allows you to connect your propane devices to a bulk tank. During the power outages, like I said, these can be awful hard to find sometimes because everybody else is going to the store to get them. Now this little device here, very inexpensive, but can be worth its weight in gold during a major outage and all your little propane cylinders are empty. It allows you to simply connect this tank to a bulk cylinder from your propane grill and refill these and keep you in business. Now because this video is focused on alternative and emergency lighting for the homestead, I'm not going to display the type of lantern that you pump up and burns a Coleman fuel. I don't like having any type of device that burns a pressurized gasoline inside my house. Those type of lanterns are much better suited for outdoor use. <laughs> Change the mantle, simply take this nut off, remove the top, remove your globe, and the little buggered mantle here. Now it's not really necessary that you wear gloves to handle your mantles. Your mantles should be just fine if you don't wear gloves. The only reason why I do it is because in the past I have seen mantles burning unevenly 
with black fingerprints on them. And the fingerprints are from the oils in your hands, of course. Um, if I'm going to go through the process of putting a mantle on and all of that, I don't want to have it burning unevenly. I just want to do it right the first time, and I just assume not get any finger oil on the mantle. So I'm going to put the gloves on and go ahead and do my process. But you can choose to do it however you want. To get started here, I bunch up the mantle a little bit. Then I start a square knot, but give it two wraps instead of one. Like that there. Two wraps instead of one. Now this is a little trick my sister taught me one time when she was assisting me tying up a rotisserie chicken. I'd make my square knot and I'd tell her, put your finger there. And go to make the secondary knot and she goes if you wrap it twice it won't loosen up on you and I tried it and it worked so when you learn something give credit where credit is due so many people on YouTube now are grabbing other people's information regurgitating it and taking it for their own a lot of copycatters out there so it's a good thing that when you learn something give credit where credit is due so that little thing like that right there my sister taught me that and it works slick let me tell you so, now I'm going to take the mantle and I'm going to slip it over the little spot there, cinch it down. See that knot is staying really tight. And then I'm going to make another knot. And this one's just going to get the single wrap. Then I'm going to cut off these little tabs. You can leave them out about an eighth of an inch or whatever. They're not going to cause any harm. Now these mantles come in two different types and it happens to be that the other mantle that on here is the other type so I will show you a close-up of that. This mantle here is a clip-on type just has a little metal clip and this is the tie-on type. Doesn't matter which one you use they both serve the same purpose. Now after repeating the process light both mantles with a match and let them burn thoroughly. This is done with the gas turned off. Then reinstall the globe and cover and your lantern is ready to light. So I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. You just don't want to touch the mantles with the match. Now the first time that you light them with the new mantles, it'll take a few minutes for the pressure of the gas to puff the mantles up into shape. They're just such handy lights to have. They're much safer and easier to light than the pump up type with the burn the Coleman fuel. Uh, the, the light that they throw is plenty sufficient for task. And I love the mobility of them. You can take them room to room, take them outside, use them indoors or out, you know. Just a very, very handy item to have. That about do it. We'll be ready for action next time we need it. Okay, that ought to cover the basics for all the oil and propane burning lanterns. The next part of the series, I will walk you through the process of filling your own one pound cylinders and then we'll move right on to the basics of some simple off-grid electric. I hope you enjoyed the short tutorial. All the best. God bless.